No? Okay, now we are. Now we are. Good morning, church. <laughs> it's uh, an honor to be standing here, to be able to share during this time. I'm not going to look around and pretend there's people here, because the only people here are the three of us here, we're self-distancing as well, so we're, we're in some pretty crazy times. In fact, I'd say we're in the end times, but even more so now than ever before. Amen. But what I want to talk about is though the sanctuary may be closed, the church is very well open and God has called us at a time like this to bring people to Christ. Think about it, we are the disciples of the disciples that were making disciples. When, the, when Jesus had 12 disciples, he used those 12 disciples to turn the world upside, upside down, completely upside down. And in the same way now as disciples, we should still be making disciples of people that are outside. Matthew chapter 24, probably the most famous chapter in the Gospels because it focuses so much on the end. And I don't want to be that preacher, you know, that talks about the end times. But when you read the scriptures and you look at the world, you can see that this, these words of Jesus are quite literally, <laughs> they are coming true right, as, right before our very eyes. You know, when I say we're the last generation, I really mean it. There's, there's not much more left to be finished in this Bible until the Christ returns, until Christ comes back and takes his church home. So Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ that shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumours of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, and diverse places, and all these are the beginning of the sorrows. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now as tragic as the times are, and as encouraging as we need to be as Christians, sometimes encouraging can be quite hurtful because we need to be encouraged, encouraged to do things that sometimes we are not comfortable doing. You know, especially if you're a new believer, evangelism is something that we, we don't really like to, to preach about, either, either, either to say, because everyone gets so comfortable as a Christian and comfortable in the routine of church, we start to forget about the world. And now that this coronavirus is here, which will be defeated in Jesus' name. Now that this coronavirus is here, many Christians have sort of forsaken the assembling of themselves. You know, right now I'm live streaming to you guys, the church, the body, the believers, even the unsaved, hopefully. I'm preaching to you through technology now. If, if you shared this between a thousand people, I've probably shared the gospel in one sitting with more people than the apostles would have done because they didn't have the blessings of social media. You understand? You can use social media right now to preach to the whole earth in one sitting, whereas the apostles would have had to get on boats. Paul mentions in uh, 2 Corinthians how he was on a boat between Asia and the boat nearly capsized and killed him, but, you know, praise God he didn't. He preached the gospel and wrote the Bible. Chapter 14, uh, verse 24 of chapter, uh, sorry, Verse 14 of chapter 24. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. See, that scares me, that worries me. Because as beautiful as it is, the end is going to be coming. Hallelujah, for real, I mean it. I cannot wait to go home to heaven and to spend eternity with the Father. You know, Revelation 21 verse 4 says that there will be no more sickness, that there be no more pain, there be no more suffering. And that is so beautiful to look forward to in this day and age of so much hurt, pain and suffering. But as much as I want to go home, I have unsaved family members, I have unsaved friends. And during this time, during this pandemic as Christians, it is our duty, but it's not just our thing, it's our duty as Christians now more important than ever to share the gospel. I've been in fellowship with a few gentlemen in London at the moment, uh, not in London, via <laughs> Facebook, and um, 
we're seeing Twitter. Christianity is trending on Twitter because all the churches are posting about, hey, how can I get this fellowship? Hey, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? Because we can't congregate in a sanctuary, the body has taken over the online word. So people have to read the word of God because it's being thrown in their faces. You know, I'm not one to push my beliefs on anybody, but I'm definitely one to share my beliefs with everybody. And what is happening right now, though this world is going crazy, the Christians, especially the younger Christians, they're broadcasting Christ around all the platforms, Twitter, Facebook, for Snapchat, Instagram. It's blown up. People are reading the gospel online and they haven't got a choice. <laughs> they can scroll past, and, but unfortunately, they're going to read something else about Jesus and they're going to keep going. And this is the importance now of isolation. Though we are isolated in our home and the sanctuaries are closed, the body is very well, truly open. And if you are hearing this message now, I'm commanding Christians, not that I can give any commandments, but I'm telling Christians right now, please, please, and I mean this, for the love of God, share the love of God with people on Facebook. Push the love of God onto Facebook. Congregate on Facebook. Even if you have statuses and you're having debates in the statuses, keep on pushing the Word of God on Facebook. Share the Word of God on Facebook. We need to focus on evangelism now more than ever. Because we may be trapped in our homes and we can wellow in self-pity. And we can say, oh, I'm stuck in the house. You're not stuck in the house. You're safe in the house, all right? And because you're in the house, you should be using your time alone okay. to grow in the knowledge of God. The Bible says in Timothy, it says, show yourself studied and approved unto God. In Peter, it says, show yourself studied that you may give an answer when anybody asks you a question. People are getting bored. <laughs> I've been in the house <laughs> for five days, five 24-hour inside. My head's been fried, honestly. I've gone nuts looking at the same four walls over and over and over again. The only thing that is keeping me sane is the Word of God and my fellowship that I have online. Honestly, if you're going to sit there and say, I'm stuck in the house, I'm stuck in the house, I want to be in church, I want this to blow over. Saints, be the church. Now is the time to be the church. Let's not play church anymore and turn up to a building. Let's be the church. And as beautiful as everything will be when this is over, Right now, I have unsaved family members. Right now, I have unsaved friends. And they need to hear the gospel. Because the end times are upon us. It says, Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. <laughs> and then shall the end come. Think about it. As soon as the last Gentile and the last Jew hears the gospel, it's coming. The end comes. The end comes. That means every tribe that is out there that doesn't hit modern society will hear the gospel and have the chance to respond to the gospel. Because his law is written on every human being's heart. That's how we are moral. So everyone bears witness to the truth. Everybody bears witness to the truth. And this gospel of the kingdom of truth shall be preached to all the world and then the end shall come. The reason why I'm talking about evangelism and being the church online and preaching online and sharing the gospel online and having a fellowship online, publicly displaying debates online. I'm not on about Christian debates about certain theologies. I'm on about debating atheists, debating people, debating amongst yourselves, you know, talking about stuff. The reason I'm telling you is because Bible prophecy, as we know it, is coming very true before our very eyes. Amen. So true. Spot on true. Not even a little bit true. In fact, I started my job yesterday, my first job as a cleaner for Network Rail. Praise God for the new opportunity. And two of the gentlemen there, I'm, I'm cleaning the, the cups and the dishes like this. And then all I hear is, so what does the Bible say about this then? Straight away, people are interested because people are sharing it online. I said, oh, 2 Chronicles 13. If you want to turn with me, church, socially, <laughs> If you want to turn with me to 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, and we all know the scripture, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. But if you read one scripture before that, 
If you read one scripture before the famous 2 Chronicles 7.14, if you read 2 Chronicles 7.13 through to 14, it says this. Sorry. It says, if I shut up the heaven, that there be no rain. Look at Australia when the fires came. God shut the heavens on them. Australia, especially Western civilization, Caucasian civilization, uh, very much so. Any, any civilization that's, you know, with the kingdom, the United Kingdom, the USA, any kingdom that is, you know, a superpower essentially, a wealthy country, because we're so focused on our prosperity, we're not focusing on God. We've sinned. We've turned against God in the same way that where we've turned against God, God's going to send his judgment upon us because he has every right to. As much as it may suck, you know, and we see that, you know, people are dying. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the wages of sin is death. And if a nation wants to forsake God so much, God will send judgment upon it. So if I shut up the heavens, it's uh, 2 Chronicles 7, 13. If I shut up the heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence, which means disease, among my people. Let's just focus on this verse. If I shut up the heaven, it stopped raining in Australia, and the fire was going and going and going and going. If anything, they needed rain more than ever. There was a judgment upon Australia. What happened? The people started praying. The people got on their knees, People were saying on the news, for the first ever time I prayed to the Lord. And the, the language they're using, these are people that have never prayed. They're saying, I prayed to the Lord. Because their heart knows that He is the Lord. The Lord. Not a Lord. The Lord. Amen. I prayed to the Lord, they said. And look what happened when the nation repented and started praying and returning under God's ways. The rain came put out the fire. Exactly. And you may say, oh, but rains happen all the time. People can pray all the time. This happens. It's just chance. Okay, fine. If I command the locusts to devour the land. You won't find this on the social media at the moment because um, I just tried to look for it and it's been deleted from my Instagram, uh, from my Twitter account. But in Saudi Arabia, <clears throat> there was a plague of locusts sent onto the land. And I'm not just on about the odd hundred locusts, I'm on about hundreds of thousands of locusts hitting the streets of Saudi Arabia, eating the food, bringing famine unto Saudi Arabia, this judgment upon God. And in the same way now it says, if I send a pestilence among my people, now free there, 2 Chronicles 3, 17, this book must have been written 4,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago, and it's predicting what is happening in 2020 to precision, 100% precision. It's not a joke anymore, guys. It's, it's not a case of the Lord will come back, He loves everyone. We need to be telling people about their sin. We need to be telling people to repent because it says in verse 14, we pray in church all the time, Lord, your word says, if my people... That's me, that's you who are watching. Which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then, then it's based upon a condition. If, if you have the choice today, you can let this happen and wait for the judgment of God to pass over you. But let me tell you now, you need to be covered in the blood of Jesus so that the spirit of death will pass by you, that you may inherit eternal life. Because if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear, hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Church, we're, a, we're saved, we're not soft. All right, we are saved, we are Christians. I know some Christians that are total fucks, <laughs> you know. We, we're imperfect. Some Christians are hardcore people, you know, and they've gone through some stuff, but they will tell you the truth whether you like it or not, you know. It's now, although we can't go out traveling to share the gospel, like the apostles did. Look at Sean. Sean went to America sharing the gospel. 
Just as the apostles would have done, getting up, traveling, sharing Jesus. That's what we're called to do. Now that we're locked in our doors, inside, I don't think there's anything better for us to do than to share Jesus. If we, you know, we can sit at home and we can focus on the darkness or we can focus on the death that's around us or we can take a step of faith and we can start sharing the gospel online. If you can't evangelize, well, you can evangelize. <laughs> if you think you can't evangelize, I should say. Just speak about Jesus and what he's done. Nobody can take your testimony away from you. And if you know people that haven't got social media, give them a ring, give them a call, you know? Tell them, get close to somebody in isolation. Wait for an opportunity. Wait for God to open up a door so that you can share the gospel with someone. Because these end times, people are looking for hope right now. You know, the, the Chancellor, in, I think it's the Chancellor, in Parliament said, now is not a time for orthodoxy. Um, I couldn't disagree with him more. Although science, as beautiful as it is, we're limited by science. Science can't explain everything. It can't. We need prayer. In 1940, the king shut down the country for a national day of prayer. And, it's, and, and I watched the commentary on the other day, and it says in there, we as a Christian nation still believe in, still believe in divine sovereignty, power, and rule. Wow. If only the church believed in divine sovereignty, power, and authority. If only the church, right now, at this time, would humble themselves enough to share Jesus with people. We need to deflate our egos now, guys, because it's not about us anymore. It really is not about us anymore. It's about the unsaved now. It's about Jesus and his gospel that he's appointed to us to share with the world. That is the only reason that we are on earth. Because <laughs> if we get saved and we go straight to heaven... There's no point in salvation. You know, if we get saved and we go straight to heaven, what about my mum? What about my dad? What about the people that I love that are not saved yet? How are they going to hear the gospel? We are the disciples of the disciples. If you trace our discipleship all the way back, you go right back to Jesus. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. And it is now time, as Christians and as disciples of Jesus, it's time to do the work, it's time to share the gospel, it's time to get online, it's time to blow up the social media world with Jesus and the Messiah because there's no other hope for humanity right now. They reckon 18 months it'll take to find a vaccine. I want to walk, like Sean said, I want to walk through the coronavirus church, laying hands on people, seeing them up, healed, saved, preaching. This is the type of faith we need now, guys, because I, I, I as, this word was hard for me to bring because I wanted to bring a really encouraging word during this time, but God's been laying on my heart so much. I haven't written any notes at all, no, power, no, no bullet points, no nothing, because this, this word has been so heavy on my heart for the unsaved and been so heavy on my heart for the church. We really, really now, it's no kidding anymore, guys, for real. Hear me out, it's real. It's real. Thousands of people are dying. Dying. 1,000 people died in one night in Italy. 1,000 people in a night. Church, it's no joke. Grab hold of this truth now. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive this sin and will heal their land. Guys, now is not a time for hidden sin. Now is a time for repentance, purity, faith, and just evangelism. If you've got something in your life that you know you're not supposed to be doing, it's time to cut it out. I'm speaking to myself now as well. You know, I'm not just preaching. I'm preaching to myself and there's things in my life that I need to seriously fast and pray for God to heal. Because if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, etc., then... I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now, if the first part is true, God has stopped the rain on Australia. Praise God, due to their repentance and faith, the rain came. He sent the locusts onto Saudi Arabia and the pestilence has hit the world. Hit the world. It's not just hit the UK, the world. The whole world has been affected. If that part is true, the second part is true. The only way that this will pass over is if we repent and we trust in Jesus Christ. That's the only way. It doesn't say, if my people, which are called by my nature, humble themselves or make a vaccine. It doesn't say that. 
God is specific, read the language of the Bible. If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, humble yourself, pray, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways, that is the only way that this will pass over us, is by the body of Christ praying. Now is a time of prayer, evangelism, intimacy. It's time to study the word. If we've got nothing to do, isolate yourself with the word of God. Do you know why prisoners get saved? Because they isolate themselves with the word and the word of God, they get healed. That is the only way that we are going to make this nation holy. The only way that we're going to make this nation Christian again. And the only way that we're going to do it is if we unite as a body online and we share the gospel. Put all your theological differences aside. Whatever you believe. I do not care what you believe. If you believe Jesus Christ died on the cross, rose again three days afterwards, defeating death according to scripture, and that he is Lord. If you believe that, you're my brother in Christ. I'll put everything else aside. Let's focus on those who don't know him. For real. <laughs> Like, we can't go outside and knock someone's door now. We're breaking the law. Romans 13 tells us to submit to the authorities, to listen to the government. It would be unwise of us as Christians now to go out and start interacting with people. There's a disease out there. Yeah, Jesus said that you could drink venom and it wouldn't touch you. But Jesus doesn't tell us to go out there and drink venom. Jesus tells us to use wisdom in our actions. There's a virus out there. And I believe if you're praying and you're seeking God's face, this virus will pass over you. But if you want to be cocky and arrogant and you want to go out there, you want to shake hands with somebody and then you want to touch your face or you want to bite your nails, God will give you over to your own foolish actions. Our actions have consequences. And those consequences are predetermined. Sin reaps death. If you, if you sow into the spirit, you reap life. Now the Spirit of God, from Romans 13, tells us to submit to the authorities, to submit to the government, as long as it's not contrary to the will of God. And praise God for the day and age that we live in. This is, this is what I mean. We're made for a time such as this. Because it just so happens, as this world shuts down now, the Christians have got every single social media platform <laughs> to preach the gospel on. We're made specifically for this time. Guys, I love you all and I miss my family. I was speaking to Lois the other day and I was listening to little Lydia on the phone. She was, it made me upset because you're my family. Like when I come to church on a Sunday, I'm not just coming to church on a Sunday. I'm, I'm with my family and I'm not seeing you guys at the moment. And that sucks because I love you all. But there will come a time where this will blow over and we'll be back together. I know we will. It'll be fine. <laughs> but... But, 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 there's a big, big condition. It's time as a church to humble ourselves, to pray, to seek God's face, to turn from our wicked ways. Whatever sin is in your life now, whether it be, you know what I'm going to say, whether it be masturbation, whether, you, whether you're using cocaine, whatever it is that's in your life at the moment that is a thorn in your flesh, that is a bit much of a thorn, something that's starting to overtake you, you need to fast, you need to pray, you need to seek God's face, you need to turn from your wicked ways, you need to preach the gospel, we need to share Jesus with every person that we can, and then God will forgive us and heal their land. That's the only way that this is going to blow up, is if we repent, we, if we repent and turn to God, otherwise we're doomed. <laughs> this Bible is coming true. For your very eyes and the gospel is so simple if you can't evangelize just put this simple scripture john 3 16 through 18 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but be given everlasting life for god sent his son into the world not to condemn the world but to save the world through him that's 3 16 through 70 and it says anyone who believes not in the son of god is condemned already because they haven't believed in the only Son of God. But those who believe have eternal life. It's so simple. We are sinners and we've been saved. We've been called for a purpose. We've been commissioned by the Messiah to share the gospel. And though the, work, though the streets are shut down, the body is not shut down, they won't shut us down. I'm telling you now, they will not shut us down. They can delete my Facebook account, I'll make another one. They are not shutting us down. They haven't got a choice. 
people, you, you don't understand. If I showed you my Twitter right now, every other post is about Jesus. And these are from people I don't even know. <laughs> Random people, millions. There's probably billions of posts about the gospel right now. Billions. And everyone has to read them. The amount of debates that I'm getting into online. The amount of people that are having seeds sown into their life. This is what we got to do. we got to sow the seed and pray. we got to sow the seed. we got to humble ourselves. we got to pray, seek God's face, repent from our wicked ways. And he will forgive our sin and heal our land. Church, it's now or never, for real. If, if this don't wake us up to the, to the truth of God, if this don't wake us up to the importance of of evangelism, if this doesn't even wake us up to the importance of fellowship, all right, because I've been out of church now for one week, one Sunday I haven't come to church and my head has been, I've been battling, it's so hard to not be in fellowship with your family, when this blows over, things will have to change, Amen. not just outside, but even within these walls, even within these walls, and I'm talking about Trinity now as well, I'm talking about every church, Things have got to change. We can't pussyfoot around sin anymore. We can't be this way anymore. We need to confront sin. We need to preach the gospel. And we need to change. We need to be on mission. We need to be sending people out here. Things have got to change when Amen. this blows over church. And I mean Amen. it like beyond mean it. I, like, seriously, I mean it. Things have got to change. They can't stay the same. I'm not, I for one am not being stuck inside the church walls anymore and not doing anything out there. I started preaching, I stopped preaching, I got comfortable in church, and this is me admitting it. I'm going to be transparent, take the mask off there. I'm telling you how it is. I got comfortable in church and stopped preaching the gospel. And that's why God has been kicking my backside, telling me, share this message, share this message, share this message. Because it's not just a message for you, it's a message for me as well. Church, these are the end times. Amen. I'm not just talking, I don't want to be that preacher that talks about the end times every five minutes. But the Bible, oh my gosh, the Bible is coming true right before everybody's eyes. We need to open up those spiritual eyes with the keys of truth that God has given us. This gospel that he has given us is, is Jesus' gospel, is your gospel, is your gospel to share. The Apostle Paul said, my gospel that God made me a minister of, in the same way that God has made you a minister of the gospel. If you are saved, you are a minister of the gospel. You have a testimony. Nobody can take that from you. No one can take that from you. Nobody can take away the fact that I was sniffing cocaine and smoking spice and using loads of women and taking painkillers to get high. Nobody can take the fact that God came into my life, took that away, shattered the chains, broke them, threw them in the bin and set me free. No one can take that away from me. And in the same way, people in their houses right now are going to be isolated. Their mental health is going to be going crazy because of the drugs they've probably taken as well, a lot of them, especially the younger generation. Because now they're not going to get, be getting their hit, because they're not going to be getting their line. Honestly, I've been there. Their heads will go nuts. They will go crazy. I mean it. Now is a time to pray and show people that we have a chain-breaking prison saving saviour. You know? <laughs> He is, uh, what is he, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. And I'm telling you, it's dark out here. <laughs> but there's a light, and his name's Yeshua. It is Jesus, but I like using Yeshua, that's his real name. Yahweh's salvation. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven and forgive this sin and will heal the land. Listen, now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and mine heart shall be there perpetually. God will hear your prayers. Now is the time, if you know somebody that has coronavirus, if you can at all, social media, share the gospel with them. Because their mind is going to be going crazy right now, they don't know what's going on. They need hope, brothers and sisters, because this is a killer of a disease. Unfortunately, I've seen on Wales Online that a 21-year-old girl, God bless her, a 21-year-old woman, sorry, God bless her soul, unfortunately passed away due to this virus with no underlying health conditions. 
If I don't wake you up, brothers and sisters, I don't know what will. I mean that for real, because there's a literal killer of a virus out there, and the devil seems to be getting the upper hand. But we know that in Christ the victory is already won. And when we're sharing this gospel, we're not sharing this gospel from a place of defeat or, or, or a place of a possibility of a win. We're sharing this gospel from a place of victory. And as I preach this gospel, where I am right now, I'm reminded of the words in John 3.16 one more time. For God so loved the world. People will say, if God loved the world so much, why is he sending a disease among them? Well, the Bible tells us that God is a jealous God. Um, and as much as I have loved, if, if I was in a relationship with a woman or I was married to somebody, as much as I would love my wife, if she was to cheat on me, I would not want her to be blessed. And I love her. And if she cheated on me, I'd demand justice. In the same way God has supplied, it goes back to my last message I preached. God has supplied everything for us. God woke you up today. God is making your heart beat for you right now. God is sustaining the breath in your lungs. God is. God is. And we are His. Right? And if we are going against Him, He's going to send a judgment against us. Of course He is. If we have chosen within our freedom to go against God, then God will choose in His just, righteous, moral judgment to send a judgment upon us. As simple as that. You want to argue with God? Carry on. Be my guest. I'm not going to argue with God. He's bigger than me. <laughs> He's bigger than you as well. You want to argue with God? Carry on. But I'm telling you, you will lose. And you will bow. And you will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's up to you to decide right now whether you do it at home, in your bedroom right now, or in your living room right now. You bow down knee and you say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Or you wait until you die and you stand before him, not clothed in the righteousness of Christ, and you bow your knee and you say, wow, Jesus, you really are Lord. To which you'll say, I never knew you depart from me. Terrifying. Terrifying. I can't think of anything worse. Literally nothing worse. Literally nothing. There's nothing worse than hearing those words, depart from me, I never knew you. Go. Go. Guys. It's a short message, it's a heavy message, and I love you all more than, well, I, you, literally I love you like family, literally I would lay my life down for most, well, my children, all of you, I'd lay my life down for every single, oh, every single one of you. Guys, please, for the love of God, and I mean that, for the love of God, share the love of God, so that the love of God may shine bright in these dark times. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for another day, Lord. Mm. We thank you, Lord, that we are your children. We thank you, Lord, that you are our creator, our sustainer, our life and our light, Lord. And Father, there is a pandemic outside. Our nation is ungodly, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, that we are in a church that prays for this nation, Lord. Lord, I bring a request before you, Father God, that you would use Trinity, Lord, you would use your body on this earth right now, Lord, via social media, Lord, via any means, Lord, that you see necessary, Lord, to share this gospel with the lost. Father, give us the strength to overcome sin. Father, give us the strength during this isolation to just press into you, Lord, not to focus on the isolation, Lord. But let, us, let it be a chance, Lord, for us to see us isolated with you, Lord, locked in a room with you, Father God. As if Jesus himself was sat at the end of my bed, Lord, I pray... Father God, that you would give us all revelation, Lord. I pray, Father, that you would give us the words to speak to the lost. I pray, Father God, that you would give us the words to preach on the social media, Lord. That, Father God, your Son, Jesus, would be glorified. And that your gospel, and that, Lord, your redemption may be healed by the lost and the hopeless, Lord. That we may bring light to darkness, Lord. That we may be sought in unseasoned places, Father God. Use us, Lord Jesus, for your glory. Use us, Lord. I mean it, Lord. I mean it, Lord. I'm not just, I'm pleading with you, God, that, Father God, you will use your church in this time to bring Great Britain, as we've left now, the European Union, Lord, to make Great Britain great for you, Lord. Let us be a great Christian nation, Jesus, yes. that we may bear fruit 
and reward for eternal life, Lord. Because that's what I'm focusing on now, Jesus. It's all about you, Lord. Amen. Father, have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless.